This is Sexy Funny Raw, where we chat all about the world of sex, from dating and relationships all the way to the adult industry itself. I'm Sylvia Sage, and this is my Pornspective, answering all the questions you weren't even brave enough to ask Google. Get ready, because Sexy Funny Raw starts now. Hey, hey, hey! Welcome back to another episode of Sexy Funny Raw. I am your host, Sylvia Sage, here with my <coughs> guest host, Mr. Alexander. Woohoo! I just have to say, I love the way you say raw, because it's almost like raw. Yeah. Sexy Funny Raw. That's how I feel about it. Yeah, because it's in your face. That's exactly what it is. And it's so educational. You know, my mom listens, and hey. she's learned She's learned many things. I, I, I love I think she should have learned listen. before. It's like, she was probably doing it wrong. Right. My Everyone poor dad. is. Everyone has been doing it wrong. That's why the show is so important. I absolutely absolutely love it. And today we are going to be talking about how to deal with porn fans with our expert and special guest, Mr. Eddie Danger. Danger, danger. Fire in the disco. (laughs) Uh, He does have experience on camera and studio work as as well as self-produced work and being a go-go boy around the nation. Today's show, you guys, is brought to you by our... um, Sponsors, both Fleshbot, CyberSocket, and my sponsor, Slickwood Lube. Slickwood. Absolutely. we got to be sliding around. Oh, I didn't give lube to our last people. Oh. Damn it. You can mail it or deliver it in person. I'll deliver it. I'll, I'll help you deliver it in person, too. <laughs> and then I'll layer it on, and then I'll lick it off. <laughs> we have the sexiest guest, Eddie, and you are absolutely no exception to that rule. I absolutely love that you have a poster of yourself just ripped out of your mind and right behind you. And look at you with your little hat up and your tattoos. And your, oh. I can tell you, if I had a picture of myself in the back, people would be like, oh, is that Ross Matthews? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bitches. You, you press the button and it talks like him, too. I love it. <laughs> Chess hands. Wait, I need to know, where are you right now, Eddie? Tell the people where uh, you're... Your address. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I need a physical uh, a address. Great idea yeah. talking about fans. Yeah. That sounds like an awesome idea. <laughs> um, I'm in Washington, D.C. right now, and uh, uh, yeah. Really holding down the fort out here. Yeah, a yeah. A lot of action in terms of sex work. But that's behind closed doors, though. But yeah. So are you just shooting for yourself up there since you're not around for studio work? Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I, I prefer it, to be honest, because yeah. I like my quiet life. And, and traveling is, is kind of a pain in the ass. It really opinion. is. Yeah. Yeah. Especially right now. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I've flown around and done things, but it's it doesn't. It's a, it's not what I really enjoy doing. It yeah. seems to be a little too much chaos for not enough payoff. Oh, I days. feel that. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I have to tell your audience, uh, Eddie is is very well known because he unabashedly films gay scenes, straight scenes, trans scenes, any type of scenes, um, and he's literally become a spokesperson for inclusive porn. I love it. Um, which you know, it's a hot topic right now, and I think you were doing it before <laughs> we it had cool. the discussion about inclusivity, and we were talking on the last episode that uh, you know people are watching trans videos a lot, especially yeah. in the Midwest, mm-hmm. um, and it was such a foreign scary kind of topic and i know sylvia you filmed one of the first scenes i think it was for men.com where there was a woman in the gay scene yes and the people were like they no did not like it no 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 <laughs> yeah they were very against it but i've since then done several by scenes with gay performers and they have gone better more well received i feel like it's more well received when it's group sex because that was my other scenario was a group sex scenario with um gay performers and that was a little bit easier i have a hard time saying gay performers though when they are still sleeping with women i consider myself i don't even consider myself bi i consider myself pan because i sleep with absolutely everyone so and that yeah that seems to be the uh the correct way to uh, refer to all of this because yeah. there are a lot of people that are in between and on the spectrum and all over the place yeah so you don't know and and oftentimes you don't even uh, you don't take in their gender into account when you're um, <laughs> looking at what's beautiful. Yeah. You know? No, I 100 percent agree. But I, ha- I have to ask this because I know now we have the term pansexual. It's become yeah. very mainstream. We have even, uh, you know, A-list Hollywood celebrities coming out as pansexual. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gigi Gorgeous came out as pansexual. She's come out for the fourth time in her life. Um, and wow. so we have these new terms. Yeah. And um, 
you know, I think, Eddie, do you think you had this kind of idea of being uh, this pansexual energy, like, early on when you were going through puberty? Is Like, what, what were you attracted to? Or were you straight, and then you dallied into gay porn, and that opened up? Or <laughs> what was your journey? Yeah. yeah. No, it was all at once. I had, like, a, I feel, a formal upbringing studying heterosexual uh, normalities, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'm comfortable in that. Like, I had the first dance with the girl. I had the first crush with mm-hmm. the girl. But you know you're different when you're growing up, and and not a lot of people (laughs) really can put something like pansexuality into words, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, especially when you're uh, raised in a situation. Bisexuality didn't even exist a few years ago. Right. So (laughs) the fact that we're fighting for for all these colors on a flag right now is Mm -hmm. pretty amazing to me. But no, I didn't know what uh, what the fuck pansexuality was. I I knew I was kind of odd, (laughs) and... uh, and I'm still odd today, even though I can <laughs> what's, what's making me the way I am. But, yeah, it was a matter of um, none of this makes sense. The way you're treating each other doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. And then as I grew up, I just kind of uh, started to put it all together. And it takes a while because especially I had a kind of a conservative upbringing. Right. So it takes a lot of pushing away everything you know and letting things kind of find you. Mm-hmm. And with porn, <clears throat> it found me. And uh, I was looking for work, and <laughs> the company that picked me up, clearly, of course, because no straight companies are going to um, roll out the red carpet <laughs> for a young man. So, um, <clears throat> no, of course not. You know, they'll pay you $20 and say, here, you get the fuck a hot girl, you know? Right. Go nuts. And, uh, but no, that, so, I, so I found this gay company. I didn't know anything about it. I had an open mind. I didn't give a fuck. I had never bottomed in, in, in my life. But had you been <laughs> with a man prior? Uh, no, no. no. I, so your I, first I had... gay experience at all was a, on a porn set. Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, sex, like, sexually. I mean, like, I, oh. I had, like, had romantic feelings. I had known okay. men. But, um, but, yeah, it was in that first scene. It was rub him, and I went, was flown out to <laughs> Florida. Because, of course, you wouldn't, especially growing up the way I did, there's no way you would say, let me fly myself out and, and find a porn career. It right. just wasn't even in consciousness like you were so like there was all the barriers were up to, to let you know that a reality like that exists you know but wait eddie <laughs> so, they um, found you how how did they well, find they you fa- oh craigslist so what? They, oh my god that's a blast from so, the past <laughs> so I, I when i well it's not like they found me on, on myspace or anything i yeah. wish i had a glamorous story like that but i was sitting there looking for work um so i could work and go to college and okay. i didn't have a day job or anything and I saw all this bullshit on Craigslist, and I was thinking, I-, I want a job that's interesting. You know, it was easy to go down the road to the mall. I was very young. I was, like, 18, <clears throat> you know? And all you see are, like, the retail shops. Okay, I could I could, I could, could make right. pretzels all summer right. or this. And so I was looking on Craigslist, and it says, adult males want a model. And I was like, yeah. I, was like, I, don't, I don't fucking <laughs> know about this, so take some pictures, whatever. It wasn't even like they asked for nudes oh, um, at the time. They just said, hey, sh- sh- sense, show that you're interested. And it was this try-hard fucking, uh, it, it sounded like his name was Every Twink Porn Star from 2003. It, it, Chad every, Michael it, Chad. It, yeah, exactly. Or like, or like, or like Topher, give me another name, you know? It, it just like all these, like it was the, the basic archetype of these, um, of the people. So anyway, so I was like, that sounds official-ish. And so I'll go with that. And it turns out they were working for Venetian. And uh, and that so I did four scenes out there in like a few wow. days. They they slammed it back to back. Wow. I had no clue what the fuck I was doing, but I didn't work with any gay people. What um, all solo <laughs> stuff? No, it was all it was all gay for gay pay. Porn oh, straight, straight dudes. <gasps> That's so yeah. weird to me. That, I, I still I still don't understand that. Yeah. So it was that didn't even go thing. in my head. You don't understand that. I was like, oh, all solo stuff. You're like, no, all straight dudes. I'm like, whoa, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was fucking nuts because my first scene with that guy was like, well, I've never bought him before. This should be interesting. He's like, <laughs> he's like, yo, just so you know, um, like I like to kiss sometimes when I'm doing this stuff, but don't worry. It's not just uh, I wanted to clear it with you to make sure you were no homo. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no homo. I'm about to fuck you. Yeah. Like, what a weird, yeah. what a weird. And I might kiss you. Yeah. yeah. But I think he, he felt like a more like an obligation socially. To say that to me because after asking him what, what, what so what's your deal what's going on here i'm brand new it's my first time uh, when i was saying that to him he said he's got a wife 
and yeah. he knows what he does. And I was like, boom. Yeah. Because I was in a totally different world for where that was ever possible. Right. You know? And you were 18. Like, what? I mean. That is, I mean, and how did you know how to prepare? Like, my first gay sex experience was so <laughs> awful. I didn't have sex for almost a whole other year because it traumatized me so much. I was like, well, I didn't know all that was going to happen. Did you? you know, I didn't know to clean. Well, I, 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 I've never bottomed, but it was, oh, he I mean, clean. I didn't know to, like, ease into it. I just was like, I oh, love okay. you, honey. I love you. <laughs> and then he wasn't ready, and it was, it was, it was awful. It was bad. Yeah, it was okay. bad. Okay. All right. Okay, so please go on. I'm so sorry, Eddie. I just sometimes get very sidetracked in my interest into Alexander's sex life, and I'm very interested. I want to know all about it too. No, right? nobody so wants to. Dom know. top energy. He's running around right? With that beard. I know. I saw that beard. Oh yeah. Well. So, so yeah. how how did you make that transition to filming uh, straight scenes then? Wait, we didn't ask. Well, we didn't find out how he prepared. That was the whole oh, question. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I Sorry. needed to know that. I needed to know. Yeah. Okay. So, so basically, they pushed me into these rooms, and I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm just out looking wide-eyed at all this, <laughs> all this bullshit that's going on around me because it's like an office space. Did this they give you an sexy. enema? They did. And so okay. somebody walks up to me, and I'm in this sober reality with all these computers and shit, and people have offices. And then somebody walks up to me with a tube that I've never seen before, a fucking bottle. And he said, he said, empty it out. You're going to need it. And I was like, what is this? And then he said, you go to the bathroom and you empty your ass. And I was like, oh, geez. And I, it's not like I knew what to right. do. But I, well, listen, but lightning strikes that day. And I'm getting all excited realizing this. So basically, so I, I, I shot that little pipe and shoot of water up my butt. because oh, I, no. I, I got rid of the safe. Oh, you did. Oh, that. Okay, good. Yes, have, yes, God bless. Yeah. And then <laughs> God bless. Hashtag water, God bless. And, I like, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, there you go. And it was such a casual situation. I was so excited about this because I thought, oh, well, I hadn't even considered the fact that I had to clean an ass out. Yeah. But, <laughs> But um, but anyway, no, but but like, but it was a magical scene because after all that bullshit was going on, and I I was I was good to go the whole time. We came at the same time. Oh, that's he hot! Bam! Like I'm shooting jizz, he's shooting jizz, and I'm just like, this is an incredible stuff. Fireworks show, waterworks, just like oh the thing in, the, in Las Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> love it. So I just want our audience to know really quick, since this is a sex education podcast, what he was talking when he said, "God bless." Yes, I did dump it out. If you are handed an enema, uh, any any regular circumstance, the enema is filled with medicated water. So what that will do will just force everything in you out, and you don't want that if you're about to have sex with someone. So what you want to do is dump out the solution, make sure you rinse that bottle super well, and then only douche with water. That way it clears everything out without actually giving you the medical enema that you don't want to happen. <laughs> now, do you enjoy doing anal scenes? I enjoy anal scenes. I don't enjoy cleaning for them because douching makes me sick to my stomach mm. usually. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just, Date night. <laughs> yeah, but I enjoy anal sex. And in fact, if, uh, ooga, yeah, ooga. I, I prefer <laughs> vaginal sex even with something in my ass because I like a lot of stimulation. I've done a lot of porn, so I feel like my vagina is just like, what do you got next? <laughs> uh, so I got to really spice things up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a multiple multiple stimulation girl myself. So yeah. like more horsepower on that Sibian, right? <laughs> oh, I have you. a Sibian. Trust me, I can turn that thing all the way up. <laughs> yeah, rider cowboy. <laughs> okay. Uh, I feel like we haven't really introduced Eddie. Do you want to? Yeah. So uh, you have seen Eddie Danger on Johnny McGovern's A Queen. You've seen him on the Howard Stern Show. You've seen him make appearances around the nation about every club, drooled over his Too Hot for TV Instagram. And you have probably watched his porn a few or many, many, many times. Um, like I said, he films regularly with gay, straight, bi, trans co-stars. Um, he is a renaissance man who has a master's. He's an accomplished poet, published author, and musician. Um, and he is an enigma. And he's one of my favorite people in the biz because he's such a sweetheart yeah um and he's so hot he's so hot i'm so mad you're not in the studio I'm like <laughs> what are we doing why aren't we booking people to be here and have sex with me after the show and no, i'm just kidding i'm not kidding i'm kind out. of kidding I'm good. I got uh, going on. there are lots of flights that go between i think washington you should go to washington dc i mean i have to go you know i have to travel all the time anyway, maybe you guys can have so. a threesome with lindsey graham <laughs> who's lindsey graham the senator oh the, the turtle senator who still hasn't come out yet <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, Eddie, so since our show is a sex education uh, show, we like to do um, a word of the day. And because I found a website that has so many words, uh, we're doing two words today. And how this is going to work is I'm going to read you the word. You're going to tell me what you think the meaning to this word is. And then I'm going to tell you if you're right or wrong. And if you're wrong, I'll tell you what it is. You know, he's so well-versed in so many genres. I, I yeah. think he, 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 might, he, might, he might get it. Okay, well, let's find out. Uh Oh, did we only do one this yeah, time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. We only did one this time. I apologize. So this is yours. Are you ready? Uh-oh. On the hot seat, yes. <laughs> A-B-R. Do you know what A-B-R stands for? And it is a sex terminology word, just so you know. Um, uh, auto, um, I'm going to say, uh, or anal, uh, no. Uh, yeah, no, uh, uh, uh no, B, uh, B would be the B word, the magical B word is bestiality, right? Oh, um, no, <laughs> I mean, God. no, I, I that's a know. whole different show. Yeah, <laughs> this is your guess, your guess. You tell me, Eddie, what do you think it is? ABR, uh, uh, I, I don't know, um, ass, um, I, uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't know. Uh, the, the R word would be the verb. Right, um, or or the action. So I I don't know. He's got like I the master's know. degree, like know. dissecting. Because you know he's he's a poet, so well, he's literally also, like. I feel like this one's kind of not fair, also because what the actually is the abbreviation isn't e- exactly to it. So the abbreviation is mainly used in like the fetish world and in fetish porn. But what it is is it is adult breastfeeding. A B R. Adult breastfeeding. Is this something you're into, but- Eddie? Are you? Are you an adult breast beer? Have you ever had breast milk? No. Have you ever had breast no. milk? No. I have had yeah. breast milk. Not even when I was like yeah. an infant. Really? Your My mom, mom had, had formula. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's why I like McFlurries. I've had breast milk as a child and as an adult, and I will tell you, <laughs> it tastes delicious. It's like cereal milk. Okay. I don't understand ABR. So I'm sorry. I do not understand it. Ugh. I mean, I didn't drink it from the titty. It was my best friend's milk, and I put, <laughs> made her put some in a cup, and I drank it, and it why? was really good. Just I just like, want to know. You run that a creamer? That's nice. I needed That's to nice. know what breast milk tastes like, and it tastes like cereal milk. It's so sweet. That's why babies can't get enough of it. They're like, give me that cereal milk. Then why do we grow out of it? Why don't they, like, bottle it? I don't think they grow out. I think that people just get weirded out, and they're like, your baby shouldn't be sucking your tit if it can ask for it. Oh, that's true. Like, or if your baby can (laughs) chew a steak, it shouldn't still be having your best milk. So, 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 like, Eddie, have you ever had to do it in a porn where you, like, suck milk from somebody? No, 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 I mean, no. (laughs) Um, My scenes with girls aren't, like, they're few and far between in the studio end, and so... When I do stuff, it's usually things that I feel compelled to film or like be a part of, like if I'm collaborating with somebody. But those like are tell usually me, very normal. Um, tell uh, me something like, you've been it, compelled you to do. I like that word. Uh oh, oh, there's a lot. I mean, I'm not sure if I've um, I don't know. I'd have to think about it. Uh, right. I, something think odd it. that I've filmed I, that I'm not entirely sure of. No, you said compelling. You said it, I sometimes I feel compelled to film something. I'm like, oh, well, what well, was I'm, something that was like compelled you to film? Like, well, I mean, if there's money involved, like oh. you get a custom video <laughs> request for like a farting video. Oh my okay. god! Of course, I'm gonna be you. down for that. But something that I would want to do. Um, I mean, it's it's. I just do a, like general sex. I'm like working through a lot of genres and trying to kind of. Uh, make parodies of it but but subtly like i'm just like trying to kind of take the piss out of these things of course not not making any jokes because this is a serious (laughs) matter but i think sometimes a lot of people take themselves so seriously that they don't realize they're a joke yes you know Uh, (laughs) and that's kind of what i'm looking to do (laughs) yeah absolutely i'm very well aware i'm the butt of a lot of people's jokes and totally okay with it really oh i definitely think so especially in the comedy field like now it's a little bit different because I've kind of like gained my respect in the comedy yeah, world, but yeah. for a long time people were like, yourself. "Oh, the porn star." Oh yeah, hundred and ten percent. Now, d- did other stand-up comics assume that they would go home with you? I don't ever think that. I think a lot of the comics were just like intimidated as me at, from like a man to woman standpoint. They're like, "Oh, I you know couldn't fuck her or don't want to fuck me because they think for some reason i'm dirty and that they have this super clean power over me (laughs) 
I think I'd be scared to sleep with a porn star because I would think, oh my God, they're measuring me against like, all of these that. hot bodies, big dicks, no, all this bullshit. kind of stuff. I was going to say, Eddie, you tell them because I tell that to everyone. I'm like, I'm not comparing you to anyone. Like, in fact, half the time I'm on set, I'm like, oh God, their dick is yeah. so big it's uncomfortable or this position sucks or his breath is bad or his balls have a weird smell. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm not really connected to these people. I'm making a movie and I'm a hell of an actress, you know? <laughs> Meryl <laughs> Streep. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's it's work and you feel like a robot yeah. like the whole eroticism aspect is usually just something that you flip on and off yeah because the second you cut that you're like oh boy if i have to moan one more time <laughs> geez it's, yeah it's not it's not the, the you know some uh, if i go out and i film so uh, you film something i'm fucking exhausted when i get back Same. i don't want to go fuck my 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 boyfriend girlfriend at home who's expecting a porn star right yeah, <laughs> they want somebody swinging from the chandelier you're like i'm just gonna lay here actually and if you could do th- cool things to me that'd be awesome yeah. <laughs> you, you know eddie i i, I know that you're very uh, opinionated on your social media like you just tell it how it is you share yeah. a lot of your your ideas and you also yeah. set um, and this is one thing we're going to talk about today is how you deal with fans but like you'll tell people do not message me this do mm-hmm. not ask me this i will not respond to it you really uh like determine your own rules do you do that when you do like studio stuff are you that outspoken on set to you know, like no yeah, n- not gonna I'm, do that i mean i'm not I, i'm not unreasonable uh i don't think with social media i just i won't respond to people because i just don't have that much time in my life to like spend on like and i'm not saying i get flooded with fan mail mm. that's not what i'm getting at it's like even strangers or people that just say hey what's up what's compelling you to say hey what's mm-hmm. up like why do why like why do you want to get in contact with me? what do you want out of me you know mm-hmm. it's like if we have something to, to to mesh on like so say for example some of my great friends on social media they're like diehard fans of jurassic park <laughs> or they really love the care bears and they write to me hey i saw you talking about this and then we bond over that mm-hmm. but if like if the reason why i say please don't message me is because usually it's about nothing you know well and like people do they just want to talk to somebody and make like talk to the caricature of who yeah. they think i am mm-hmm. and i'm not looking for that unless you're offering like a like a custom video or something or you want customer care for my porn hub account mm-hmm. you know do you have an only fans eddie I have a just for fans. Yeah. Okay. That's where you, that's where I answer the messages. That's what I say to people. I go, yeah. if they ask me a question, I go, please go to my OnlyFans because these people are paying for my messaging. It's your and time. you are not. Time yeah. is money. Yeah. There's no reason for me to sit here and pander to you, Mr. Freeman on Twitter. I don't know, 187. Like, I'm yeah. going to talk to my fans who are my paying fans on my fan page. And those are the people I will message back and forth, you know? Yeah. Well, and they're, they're the people that I would listen to if they have, like, a request for something. Exactly. Because- because that's where the money is, and like exactly. all the unsolicited bullshit is like mm-hmm. they're just strangers online that you can click somewhere else and mm-hmm. and see free porn that caters to your interests. Don't yeah. come to me with that shit, you know. I agreed. What, what I've been surprised, but you know, I have a lot of porn star friends, is how many people will send a message with like a dick pic or or you know boobs or whatever, thinking that oh wow this is going to be the picture that turns them around, <laughs> they're going to fall in love with me, yeah. and we're going to have sex. It's like, do you know who they just filmed with all week? Yeah. Like they don't really need some strange sending this one pic of one right. body part right. but people have this yeah. mentality that it's going to woo somebody over oh yeah or they have the mentality that they are going to save you from this <laughs> horrible life of porn uh, that you've weird. been swept away into and yeah you're like yeah. Uh, I'm a businesswoman and I have an empire <laughs> yeah. how about you thank you I'm fine thank you <laughs> yeah. we, we, we prey on insecurities you know yeah. and the more they're like hiding behind their little uh, you know their social medias and their keyboards the more power we yeah, yeah. Right. So. Now, now, Eddie, have you ever uh, escorted? Is that part of, of, of your experience? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it's it's the personal aspect that I struggle the, with the most. I can't um, talk to people. So when, um, like, I can't be inauthentic, and that's always what tripped me up with escorting. I couldn't fucking sit there and talk to people. Right. Because I, I just couldn't. It, even if I forced myself to. I'm so miserable. I'm so dramatic. Like, and uh, I mean, you guys can't see it now, but I, I will, I will be like, oh boy, and just be done for a day if something little minor. So then, this is so then I, tell so me. Es- oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I don't mean to have drugs. So with, with escorting, uh, I mean, I would not be able to deal with the personalities mm. or the sh- or being a sugar baby. First, I would. I don't talk shit about that stuff. 
but it's the it's the human to human ish contact that I have the most problem with because see I started this my and this goes back to my sexuality you know my my trajectory in in terms of the sex work was a hundred percent gay and then going into straight stuff so so I was being fucking objectified as a nude dancer the second I got out of porn so my aversion to like men and <laughs> you know. Um, I'm sorry. It's just been a weird path, and it, it changes the way you see things. And and going back to this feeling of objectification, nothing grated on me more than having to work for men when they had that little dollar over my head, and I didn't. I, and I didn't have a means to live, so I mm -hmm. needed to work for that. Mm -hmm. And so the more I, the more that happened, the more angry I got, and the more I got soured to putting a happy face on. And that's how you get the bitter, miserable fuck mm -hmm. who collects Care Bears on, on Twitter. <laughs> you know? That's but, how we become so fucked up and crazy. What so, do you... so the, the escorting just never interest me, interested me because I, that was me facing those those demons. Right, facing the direction. actual demons face to face. Well, and yeah. I've heard that escorting is not really about the sex, if that it's, happens. Yeah. A lot of time it's lonely people that want this conversation. Mm -hmm. They want to deal with their fantasy as a person and they want to feel this Accepted. affection, whatever. Yeah, and that's so, that like Eddie, like you said, that's a lot of work. Like small talk in an Uber mm -hmm. is, is murderous. It's 10 times harder than, you know, let me just drip yeah. off in your mouth. You know what I mean? An hour of listening to somebody's like weirdest <laughs> wants and needs and convincing them that they're completely normal, that that's uh, it happens to everybody. Yeah. Pay me a therapy fee. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. Yes. So but, what do you think? Go Sorry. ahead. I was going to say, what it, do you it, think is your most uh, interesting fan experience then? Oh, well, I don't know. Um, I mean, I've had sex with a lot of them because I stay in touch. I'm very D-list. I don't let anybody <laughs> fool you. I'm comfortable where I'm at. I want to be here. There's a reason why I've never, like, like climbed or yeah. traveled, like, you know, to do the big gigs. Like, I like where I'm at, you know? Um, yeah, but, but I'm sorry. You, you, you've appeared around the nation. You've been on Howard Stern. You know, you're on Hey Queen. Um, yeah. You've modeled so many brands. So you do, um, I would say, like, you have achieved a certain status yeah. without all the bullshit, which yeah. I think a lot yeah. of people would love to learn that part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so so with uh, the, the, the fan interactions, they've been really weird because, um, like, I, would, I could have a full-blown relationship with somebody who starts as somebody who identifies as a fan because I'm, we're just people here, and mm -hmm. I never got that grandiosity to myself. Mm -hmm. But it's it's the folks often that put themselves beneath me and act beneath me, yes. uh, as opposed to seeing me eye to eye. So I mean, for example, I did this. I did RuPaul's Drag Con a lot, and like I would meet a ton of people who knew, who like grew up with me, which is weird. And mm -hmm. look at the wrinkles under my eyes right now <laughs> as they say that. But then you would have this these moments where they'd walk up to you and you're like, oh hey, you're a good looking fella or or lady or whatever. And then all of a sudden, the conversation turns into they're, they're asking these base questions about other people in the industry, talking shit about people that I know mm -hmm. that are like uh, that are also in the scene because they think I'll sit there and gossip with them. Mm -hmm. And they like put themselves space instead of talking to me eye to eye about something normal, yeah. the way normal people are like, hey, I enjoy porn. And, and but also I follow you on Instagram and I see you posting a lot about this bam there's a real conversation but 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 a lot of people don't go for that they go for the i'm gonna try to go as like i'm gonna ask him about what it's like to get fucked with a with a giant dildo or right. something and then you gotta sit there and suffer through that conversation mm -hmm. so there's that so but no i mean like mostly people are good with me uh, um online that's where they're horrible oh of course I, i'm uh i but i roll around in between these genres so i'm like I'm in the straight world sometimes, I'm in the gay world sometimes, and the people that give me the most trouble are the gay porn fans. Oh. They're the fucking worst to me. But, you know, the way that they that, that straight men treat women on cam sites mm. when, you know, when the girls are on cam and then you would see, like, them just talking shit in the fucking chat. Mm -hmm. um, that's the way they are with me. Because I, cause they, they have this sanctimony about their homosexuality. Yep. They think that, like, you're gay for pay, they want to talk shit, they want to act like like, I just lost a fuck ton of weight, and when my last film came out, these people were saying, oh, good, he's, he started starving himself. <gasps> eh, still mediocre. <gasps> and it's like... But, people are but evil. It's, it's, but they don't get that. Like, they're not understanding. That it's it's just, I can't handle them mm -hmm. because they're, they're on, on in a different planet. It's it's just 
the majority of that fan base that doesn't understand me. The straight people, they just, they aren't threatened by me. They don't mm -hmm. I think I'm trying to be a star or anything. The straight audience doesn't give a fuck. And right. you know, they welcome the straight, the trans, the trans porn with open arms. Mm -hmm. They love that shit. Mm -hmm. You know, it, and it's crazy to watch this. Like, like how is my straight audience so much more liberal and, 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 um, you know, <laughs> that is so interesting to me. It's it's because, you know, uh, uh, pardon the term, but we are a very butthurt society. And I'm the first to say it. You know, we'll get upset if somebody uses our wrong pronouns rather than mm -hmm. taking that as an opportunity to have to a explain. conversation and become educated. We're mm -hmm. so ready to attack and we feel so threatened by everything mm -hmm. that we're missing the big picture. Like you said, Eddie, mm -hmm. for the straight community to be more inclusive in porn is, you know, I mean, gay, get, get your stuff together. But mm -hmm. I really think it's I think the gay community of, of anybody in entertainment, um, they feel like they own you. You know, mm. that's why we love to build up our icons. You are and then ours. We, right. No one else can have you. And yeah. we like to build yeah. them up. Like, remember when we all loved Britney Spears when she first came out and then she shaved her head and we love to tear her down. Mm. And now we're back to free Britney. Right. You right. know, we are so fickle and we love to tear down our idols mm -hmm. because, you know, we get some Somebody weird, on top that perverse. can go down. Yes. Let's take them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I do have yeah. to say, Eddie, like you film, you know, gay scenes, but you don't. And this sounds so stereotypical and so ignorant. But just to put it in, in quick terms, you don't have right. a lot of the at attributes of a gay man, such as, hey, girl, let's talk shit. You know, <laughs> you know, I'm going to you know, do drag or I'm, I'm going to do this kind of stuff. Um, you have a very different type of energy, which I think is yeah. you can't really categorize I'm, it. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, no, I'm definitely have a swish to my voice or a lilt <laughs> rather. I know what's going on with me because I talk to plenty of straight girls and they give me the rundown on how I compare to other men that they've been dating or mm. seeing. And you get you get to realize how different you are. Well, you're you not know, as misogynistic, so there's that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah that. But then, I, of course, I realized that I, I was raised in the community. I, I don't I don't have a relationship with the life I had before I got in the a queer community and my whole world Wait, is well, well i'm gonna stop you there eddie what do you mean by that you don't have any connection like to your family and friends before no not really it was, wow it's, it's, it's a much different life then. okay and uh and i really started to come into my own and this whole pansexuality realizing that and harnessing that power right there that's where i found my little world and this right. is where i'm staying i'm enclosed in this safety mm -hmm. <laughs> chamber and i'm never coming out but like, but before that, I did have to leave all that. I'm sorry. What brought us to this? But um, what 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 were you saying? I'm sorry. I don't even remember <laughs> where the beginning question was. No, we're just, just talking. About, you know, about so much because I I find you so interesting. Um, and that's why I say you are a spokesperson for oh, oh, in, in, the, inclusivity. The, uh, okay, so I'm talking about the this the the weird personality that I have. I was raised in the gay community, so mm -hmm. a lot of the things I do, my lexicon is entirely like what what's been going on in the gay community mm -hmm. essentially because i i grew up in nightclubs you know gotcha. <laughs> like this is my my world experience has been um enabled by this gay uh porn stuff right. and, the, and the go go dancing and 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 the carrying on and doing the porn and all this shit and you know i've seen the world with this with the straight stuff but it's certainly not as fun as <laughs> like as picking up a gig with a bunch of drag queens it's 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 been my whole life Wow. So um, I, from I 18 know. on, this is all you've done, huh? Yes. Wow. Well, I mean, I have a job and shit, but Whoa, like, okay. but my, but my social. Sphere, and you have a master's my... degree, so you were obviously doing other things. So yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. But what I'm saying that this is like, I mean, you have your community and the mm -hmm. people that you keep close to you, and they've always been gay bars. Mm -hmm. They've always been gay people, and I like I have never been able to connect to the straight community. Really? Um, I, 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 no, except for having a, a, a woman, a girlfriend in, or a woman in my life or something. That's my really the only straight part of me. <laughs> Interesting. The rest of it is running around, like appreciating colors and going to drag shows. And, colors. and that's my life. And it, and it's I when I meet girls and I'm seeing somebody right now, I'm bringing her into this world with me because right. I can't. I'm too afraid to leave. <laughs> yeah. You know, I like my people. Uh, unfortunately, the porn fans hate me, and they 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 really like to stick it to me. But I, you know, it, it's my it's my community, you know. Yeah. But I have to say, I've followed your social media for so long, and I've seen you share about your relationships with girls that you've had. Yeah. Um, I haven't really seen that kind of like romantic type relationship with a guy from your s social media. And that's me. We're talking about how fans think that they know your life mm -hmm. and that, you know, I'm I'm part of your romance story. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, he's dating somebody new, but it's not a boy. You know, I think that's I, a lot of us gays are like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
They're it, like, see, are you? Know, you? It, it's it's mm-hmm. that observation that keeps me from posting things on the internet. Interesting. Yeah. Um, because listen, I mean, I started this bullshit when I when I was getting. I first stepped into the clubs. I got involved. I got my heart broken like every mm-hmm. other boy that's delving into the gay community, and especially in a small town where I grew up. You know, um, it was really toxic. I got my feelings hurt, and that was just like. Uh, okay, so now my personal business, my my intimacy, and all of my like weird fucked up sort of, I hadn't figured out my sexuality at the time. All of a sudden, that's being made public because this person can't keep their mouth shut. I'm learning now. Um, so, but what I found is that there's we have such a connection, and it's a benefit of the community because I have friends all over the fucking country. Mm. We always know what's going on in the gay community. Like, there's always some drama that we all have an opinion on, and we all know about the same shit. However. Um, if you fuck one person and post that on the internet, or if, or if you like say you're in a relationship, you're bonded, baby. Yep. You know, yeah. people keep track of this shit, and like all of a sudden they're running around with your business. And I love my personal life, <laughs> and I like my private life to stay private. I've yeah. been in relationships with guys, but I'm not publicizing that at all. Really? Uh, you know? No, it never got to that wow. because uh, it, things would happen. Right. And of course, I'm working in nightclubs, and I yeah, I was messing around and being a I was definitely not a reliable partner, so I think it's never progressed to the point where I would be even talking about my my male relationships. But um, but it's kind of hard, and especially because all of my uh, deep friendships were the folks that that were with me when I was happy, like at Hey Queen and and like uh, in Los Angeles when I was having fun uh, traveling around and going to the bars. Like my big relationships are all very scattered. Do you so, feel abandoned um, by those people sometimes? Then, with uh, the reaction no. to your straight porn. Uh, well, no, no, I'm, I'm comfortable now. I was okay. in the past. It was like that because mm-hmm. there was a lot more um, animosity. Um, but now the world, um, you were my in, friend in general... until I fucked this person. And now you're no longer my friend. Oh, oh, you mean like that? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Well, no, there was a lot of judgment. You mm-hmm. know, there, I can't believe you were with that person mm-hmm. or like, or people would take my story around town. Like, like I recently slept with a local drag queen. And I heard about it from everybody else. Wow. And it's like now I'm the, I'm suddenly uh, I'm married to their ability to perform on stage, you know, like because that's what people say. They critique the queen and they and instead of critiquing the person, it's 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 become a toxic thing. But this is where my life is. You know, my my safety, my, my whole my world is the gay community. So yeah. I, I, I can tread a little lighter on that. But um, but, you know, girl, women come into my life and. And then if we break up, then I, you know, they don't, they leave me alone and I don't have to be berated with the memories, you know, and seeing them every night out at a gay bar. Interesting. You know, Interesting. It's, it, yeah. It's, it's bad enough, you know, when I, cause that, this is where I go. It's bad enough when you break up with somebody and you have to see them. Right. That's why you don't people that date in your building, that live in your building. Yeah. <laughs> I, that's hey, so I've convenient. That yeah. <laughs> I've, I've definitely done that too. And then it, that's awkward too, but I, oh, yeah. listen, it's. Yeah, it, but it's another thing. Like, I mean, since my I'm known in the gay community more, it's I, I kind of have to be more cognizant of that. Like, who am I aligning myself with? It's you weird know? that because... you feel like you're like walking on eggshells to be who you are. Sometimes that's such a <laughs> fucked up thing. <laughs> well, the fact... I think that most people on the in the in our community do. Yeah, I, I feel like it's not abnormal. All right, am I right? Well, and I have to say, you know, you sleep with a drag queen and then everybody knows it's because for the drag queen, that was like, oh, my God, you know, I slept with Eddie Danger. Like it Mm. it validates them. It makes them more popular or it's Mm. like it's some like achievement, like, you know, a notch. Yeah. Check off the box. So everybody Mm. has to know about it. It's like, well, did you have sex to have sex with Eddie in a like a like an intimate moment or did you have sex just to, you know, say, Mm -hmm. look at my success? Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's a success or failure if they're like deemed herpes ridden or some bullshit. <laughs> you know? The whole world is deemed herpes ridden. Can we just make that a fucking blanket statement already? I, like, oh. Well, I mean, you know how these people are with their judgment. You yeah. just like, you just got to take it sometimes. I just like to tell people, I'm like, have you had sex? They're like, yes. I'm like, then you have herpes. Done. All right. right. Moving on. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and another thing that people don't realize is that uh, cold sores are a herpes. Yeah. Yes. It's a different so, so baby, you got it even if you got like a little yep. cold sore or a yep. canker sore or something. Yep. So shut the fuck up, yep. you know? And don't, yep. you better not suck a dick with that canker sore. Right. You know, I, you know, I'm not a scientist. Don't <laughs> yeah. listen to me. Literally, I did a whole segment on herpes and... 
I fact check everything I do and it was like the numbers are so astronomical. You literally basically have to be a virgin your entire life to never contract. And you can be a virgin your whole life, but your mother could have passed it to you in childbirth. I mean, there are just There's so nuns many running around ways. with cold sores. It's like Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. It's it's baffling. Anyway, I know um we need to do some rapid fire questions. Yes. We, Are you ready? Uh, yes. Okay, Eddie, we're going to do a little rapid fire. You have uh, one minute to answer as many questions. <laughs> well, I say, you get so nervous, Eddie. I feel for you over there. I feel like your tension. You know what? I've yeah. known Eddie to be like such a confident, like in everything. <laughs> I think I think it's talking to you actually that's making him a little, yeah. a little. I know. Uh, it's, it's the gr- I'm getting butterflies. No, I, I could so, stop right away. I'm sober. I'm sober now, and, and I have been sober for a year and a half. Oh, good for and- you. During Thank COVID, what a hard time. Yeah. I, well, that was that was easy for me because it pulled people out of my life oh. and the, the, for enablers and shit. So, but you know, I, I just I have to figure out how to think and talk to people again. I so instead it. of being like a confident sort of, I can just live in this fantasy. I'm now cognizant of everything, yeah. and it's driving me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's something about sobriety they don't tell you. You're gonna, All your thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. They come back. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. Horrible. All right. So, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. And we start now. Have you ever ghosted anyone? Yes. Have you ever cheated on someone you're dating? Yes. Have you ever hooked up with an Uber driver? No. No. Yes. If oh. you were, if you were to sing at karaoke, what song would you sing? Oh. Oh, I don't. Um. Uh. uh, uh um. Uh, I have a hollow note song. Okay. Like, uh, what, you make my dreams come true. That's what I always go to. <laughs> Favorite time of day to have sex? Uh, uh, no, morning or night. Damn it. <laughs> well, duh. Morning, oh, okay. day, or night. Yeah. <laughs> have, have you ever hooked okay. up at the gym? Uh, yes. Foreplay or intercourse? <sighs> I, I need them both. Um, uh, but foreplay, I'm assuming, yeah. Favorite superhero? Oh shit! Uh, see, that's <laughs> Batman. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, I don't. I Batman's don't know. got uh, that leather suit. That's pretty hot. I'll just go. Yeah, the, what, the Batman. Give yeah. me, give me some gay superhero. Like, uh, like okay. Aren't they all? all of them? I was gonna I was say. Gonna say you mean all wait, of them? Aren't, aren't they, they all? Just, gay? I don't know. Batman I, and Robin I'm, for sure. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take Batman and Robin together. Yeah, there you go. As a team. Thank you. Yeah. You know, what, what's so funny, we just had the Justice League extended cut, which I watched, right? And so here's Henry Cavill as Superman walking around shirtless because he's like still in a coma, like half in, half out of it. And he's walking around. Amy Adams, the first thing that she does is give him a shirt to wear. It's oh. like, you stupid <laughs> what a bitch. Yes. Yeah, who does that? That sounds <laughs> awful. Yeah. Okay, we do have some listener questions this time. So, oh. yes, we're going to get to them. So, Sunny from IG wants to know, says, my boyfriend can't have sex without porn playing in the background. Why? Am I allowed to tell them he has to focus on me? What do you? What would you say to this person? Uh, I, I think that they have to have a conversation mm-hmm. about what's going on. Um, if it needs to happen, it might it might come from their, uh, their functioning, like the way they function. Maybe they need... Um, uh, noises, maybe they need some chaos, or maybe it's just the fact that they've spent their lives masturbating to porn that they've oh, psychologically okay, yeah. married their, mm-hmm. their, their, their erections mm-hmm. to, uh, to the noise, to the, to porn. Um, so that I, I, you can't take issue with that without getting the full story. See, I, um, I have been this person before I ever did porn. I was super offended by anyone watching it. And I definitely didn't want it to be on when we were having sex because I felt like I wasn't enough. So I understand this aspect, but I also understand your point because there is who knows what their actual reasoning for it is. It might not have anything to do with you. It might have to do with their actual performance. But, but it's, it's hard not to take it personally. It I've, I've had hookups where, hey, can I plug my computer into the mm-hmm. screen? And it was it was about that. And it wasn't like, I didn't think, oh, well, you know, I'm so ugly. They don't want to. It was like what they came in to do. Mm-hmm. It was like this whole experience. And it was so odd to me because really? number one, it took so much work. Especially like if you're in a hotel, they have to put the cable in the hotel TV. And then it's mm-hmm. like, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> See, but I feel like... That- Huh? Uh, it, it just seems like, but what if they need this? Like, what Like, what if it's like a social right. thing where they don't feel comfortable with their sexuality, so they have to um, have the experience oh, of like a distraction to somebody? 
watching and a just yeah a distraction mm. from oh, the fact interesting. that they're with I never a human took it that way. to ease into the moment maybe that's it or i feel you like know? it's the same when a woman brings a sex toy in a lot of men totally. will get same consciousness. yeah they same get brain. like they're like oh am i not enough and i'm like no you're great but this is like 10 times better for me you know like don't you want me to have the best time i could possibly have your penis yeah. and this vibrator or that you know like i want the combo right. again yeah seen a lot Needs a lot of upgrades, you know? <laughs> well, and, and, and Eddie has a lot of experience with sex toys. I mean, companies continue to send him stuff left and right. Oh, yes. That's fun. Is like the unboxing. Like, that. that's fun to watch. I it's like, love look, it. What's it's here weird today? It's fucking bullshit ever. I, I have so many awkward body parts in my apartment. I just, I love everything about it. And then busting them out for new people. Like, it's, it's like they've either found, like, a treasure trove or... They just run for the hills because <laughs> some of these silicone body parts are very creepy. Do you think yeah, some no. of them get creeped out by a bunch of sex toys in your house? The 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 body parts, um, not so much. Wait, the what body things. parts? Like there's like the like the half body. That's oh, like I have the buds those. And, I have those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I fuck my half they man. Send that shit to me, and like you know, on, on, you get it probably get on Twitter all the time. People keep saying, "Hey, try out our new this. Try out our right, new this. Right, right, for free." You know, yeah. so then they, you know, so I just have this like fucking closets and closets chock full of sex toys. But same, same. They don't oh. fucking work though. Yeah. Good luck getting a charged one. I still have that problem. <laughs> you gotta get rid of those. You gotta get rid of the excess. You gotta have, have just those dicks laying around. All I get is, we have this new hairspray. And I'm like, well, thanks. Well, thank you. I wish you would have brought that hairspray for me today. I know. Uh, I was like dying for hairspray when I walked in this place. But I'm very happy the headphones help cover up the, the no hairspray. But um, uh, all right. So we are about to uh, wrap this show up. So, Eddie, tell us how the people can find you on social media because they're going to want to. Oh, well, um, you could go on Instagram. I think it's uh, right here. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Uh, you can see uh, my, my Instagram is Eddie Danger. I'm Eddie Dangerous on Twitter because Eddie Danger is being held hostage taken. over there. And then I'm uh, on Just for Fans. I'm the exclusive over there. Nice. So God bless that. Yes? I said that's nice. I love it. Yeah. Uh, uh, loyalty. And so on um, that, and uh, and that's that's about it. And you could just Google Eddie Danger, and you're gonna find me. So and see my penis. I love it. I'm going to be googling as soon as we get off of. I'll here. send you pics. Yeah, I really can't wait. <laughs> Eddie, anytime you come to LA, you please. Uh, Let's hit go to me Washington D.C. I'll I mean, find a senator, and you can hang right. out with Eddie. All right, I'll go. We're yeah. down. I guess Come we're going. Here. We get a lot of room. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I do have to say, like, if, if people want the Eddie Danger experience, what I love about your Instagram is we see everything. We see the sexy stuff, but then we see you with the guitar singing. We see you being yeah. goofy. We see you, you know, if you're having a bad day, you'll share that. We see gorgeous pictures of your Care Bear and your dog. Oh you God, really do it. get the full Eddie Danger experience. I love it. I can't wait to follow you, Eddie. I can't wait to meet you and uh, yeah. follow up with all this. Thank you so much for being on the show. We really appreciate it. And happy birthday, by the way. I oh, happy say. birthday. Oh, my God. Oh, happy, 31, happy birthday. Baby. 31. I love it. That's awesome. So nice to meet you, Sylvia. Absolutely. And Alex. It's a pleasure as always. Always, always, always. All right, guys. That's it for us. And as always, until next time, we'll see you later. Adios, guys. Yeah. He's so cute.